Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss using the equilibrium constant or using KEQ. So today's essential question. How is the equilibrium concentration of products and reactants calculated? So um, how do we figure out how, what is the concentration of the products and, and reactants when we reach equilibrium? And you will note the word here, calculated. Please make sure you have your calculators handy. Okay, um, we'll start with a quick review or overview of the equilibrium constant. This is stuff you really already know, but the equilibrium constant, or KEQ, is a ratio of the concentrations of products to concentration of reactants at equilibrium. Okay, and we, to calculate KEQ, we can use KC, and we use KC when... Um, concentrations of reactants and products are given. Okay, so equilibrium constant of concentration Kc. And um, I kind of wrote a funky looking formula here, different way than you've seen it before, but Kc equals the concentration of the product to the number of moles of that product times the concentration of the product to the number of moles of that product, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, over the concentration of the reactant to the mole of the reactant times blah, 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 blah. Okay, so there's sort of a general formula, different than um, the sort of A to the A, B to the B thing, but there you go. Okay, and then we have KP. KP is used, we use that to calculate equilibrium concentration when we are given partial pressures. Okay, so this will be going on when we have gases. Um, and so then my funky little equation here, the, um, to figure out equilibrium constant using pressure, it's going to be the pressure of the product to the moles, to the number of moles of that product times the pressure of the product to the number of moles of that product divided by the pressure of the reactant times the number of moles of the reactant, et cetera. Okay, so uh, quick review there. One thing, though, I really want to make sure you've got is that remember that solids and liquids are not used when calculating KEQ, okay? We only use gases and aqueous solutions. So when you run across a solid or a liquid in your equation, ignore it. All right, so now what can we do with the equilibrium constant? Um, one thing we can do is predict which reaction, which direction, which reaction is favored, the forward or reverse. So let's go back to our, our funky little equation and talk about that. Okay, so if we end up with a K, if our equilibrium constant is less than 1, which direction is going to be favored? Is it going to be the forward forward meaning going from reactants to products, or is it going to be reverse, meaning going from products to reactants? Okay, so for K to be less than 1, if we look at our, our, our ratio here, that means we need to have a big number right at the bottom and a small number at the top. So meaning at equilibrium, we're going to have more reactant than product, which means that the reverse reaction is going to be favored. Conversely, if we have a K greater than 1, so I'll just keep writing this, but in blue. So if we have a K greater than 1, that would must mean that the top number is a big number and the bottom number is a small number, which means at equilibrium, we're going to have more product than reactant, which means the forward reaction is favored. And I can fill this in here, so reverse. Okay. Um, so that's one thing we can do with the equilibrium constant. We can use it as a prediction to see which side of the reaction or which direction of the reaction is favored. All right, what else can we do with the equilibrium constant? 
we can use the equilibrium constant and an ice table, which we'll talk about in a minute, to predict the concentration or partial pressures, either way, of reactants and products at equilibrium if we are given the starting concentrations. This sounds a lot like stoichiometry. It kind of is. Um, so we can use, knowing the equilibrium constant and knowing some starting concentrations, we can make predictions on um, what concentrations of reactant and products will have after the reaction reaches equilibrium. Okay, so let's um, try a practice problem. Show you how to do this while doing a practice problem. So here's a practice problem. We have nitrogen gas and oxygen gas react to form NO2. Uh, we know that the um, equilibrium constant is 0 0.01 at 2000 degrees Celsius. Okay, we know the initial concentrations. We have 0.2 molar of both N2 and O2. So what we want to do is find the equilibrium concentrations of all the reactants and products. All right, so how in the world do we go about doing this? Okay, I think I think I will try to do this on this page. Okay, so we're going to make what we call an ice table. So I think I'll do this work on the second page, but we'll talk about the ice table here. So we have I, C, E. So I stands for initial. C stands for the change. So what change occurs to get to E, which is equilibrium. Okay, so um, let's make an ice table. So we have I, C, E. And then we need to fill in our reaction. So we have N2 plus O2 gives us 2NO. So we have N2 gas plus O2. O2 gas giving us 2N, ooh, what was it? NO gas. Okay. And what do we know? In our, this is our initial, right? So starting with our initial here, what do we know? We know we have 0.2 molar. N2 and 0.2 molar O2. So 0 0.200 molar of these and 0 0.200 molar of these. And being that we are not given an initial concentration of our reactant NO and likely um, normally when you start a reaction, you start with the reactants, you make products, and then it reaches o equilibrium. So we're going to assume that initially we're starting with no NO. Okay, in the change area in the C part of ice, the very first thing you want to do is um, fill in the number of moles from the balanced equation. Okay, so we only have one and two. Um, so I'm not gonna, you could write a one there. I'm not gonna write anything. One, oh, two, not gonna write anything. But we do know we have two moles of NO. So I'm gonna write a two there, okay. So far, so good. So the next thing you want to do in the C section is to write down how much change there was from the initial conditions. Okay, um, because there's going to have to be a change, right? Um, we're using some of this stuff. So 
this area here, the reactance area should decrease somewhat. And we're adding, right, we're making some of that. So it should, that should be increasing by somewhat. We don't know how much. So I'm going to write, it's going to change by some x, right? So basically, we're going to lose a certain amount of N2 and that same certain amount of O2 because there's one mole of each of those. And those two together are going to make two times that certain amount of NO2. Okay, so we've now filled in our initial and our change section. The last thing we need to do is our, our equilibrium section. So basically here, we're going to have ice. When you do the ice table, it's I plus C equals E. Okay, so we're just going to add these areas up. So for the N2, we're going to end up with 0 0.200 molar minus X minus some change. And for O2, same thing. And for NO2, it's zero plus two times X, and that's just two times X. Okay, folks, so far so good. All right, so let's go back to our question and try to figure out what in the world we're really supposed to be doing here. We're supposed to be trying to find the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and a product. Well, we sort of have something here, right? This area here is supposed to be the equilibrium concentrations. However, we've just got a lot of X's, um, which doesn't help us much. All right, um, this page is a little bit filled up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this portion of the table to the next slide and we'll continue from there. Okay, so. We've got this stuff. Remember, we were also given Kc. Although I can't remember what it is, so let's look it up. Kc is 0 0.01. All right, so we have Kc equals 0 0.10. Um, now, if we think about the equilibrium constant, we know that Kc equals the concentration of the products, which in this case is NO, to the number of moles of that product, which is two, over the concentration of the reactants. And remember, this is occurring, why we had to go through all of this is because this is the concentration at equilibrium, right? And we weren't given the concentrations at equilibrium, we were giving the initial concentrations. All right, so now what we can do is we can plug in the stuff that we know. Okay, so we know NO2 is, well, no, well, let's, okay, so we're gonna say Kc, which is 0.10, equals the concentration of NO, which is 2X squared, divided by the concentration of NO, N2 and, and H2. So we're going to have 0 0.2200 molar minus X times 0 0.200 molar minus X now that's a com complete pain. Blah. <laughs> that's a complete pain. However, if you think about it, this and this are exactly the same. So I'm going to rewrite that as squared, right? Isn't that the same thing? So now, huh, still got a mess going on, but look at this. We have a squared here and a squared here. So why don't we square everything? So we'll square all of this stuff. 
giving us, um, let's see, 0 0.32 equals 2x over 0 0.200 molar minus x. I look good? Um, okay, let's now multiply both sides by 0 0.20 molar minus x, giving us, um, let's see, 0 0.064 minus um, 0 0.32x equals 2x. Everybody good so far? Okay, and so now let's get the x's together. So we'll add x to both sides, or 0.32x to both sides, giving us 0 0.064. Um, equals 2.32x. So now, to solve for x, we will divide both sides. I'm running out of colors here. Divide both sides by 2.32, giving us, all right up here, x equals 0 0.028 molar. All right, and now that we know x, we can plug x into these to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of our reactants and products. So let me make a little room here, and then we'll finish this up. So the concentration for both N2 and for H2 equal 0 0.200 molar minus X, right? Same for both of them. So that means 0 0.200 molar minus 0 0.200. 0 0.028 molar, giving us a equilibrium concentration for both N2 and H2 of um, 0 0.172 molar. Okay, so there's the equilibrium concentration for both N2 and H2. And then for the equilibrium concentration of NO2, equals 2x, so that means we're going to have 2 times 0 0.028 molar, giving us an equilibrium concentration of 0 0.056 molar. Okay. So that's the equilibrium concentration for NO, the product. Um, this looks really complicated, but if you're careful, go through the steps, think about what you're doing, it's not that big of a deal. All right, folks, I know you guys were hoping we were done, but alas, not. Um, we have another problem to work on, and it's a tricky one, and we're going to learn something different, so please don't hit stop and just quit. We got to do this. All right, so here we go. First thing different, and this is not a big deal, is that we're not actually given an initial concentration. We're given instead volume and moles. However, our concentrations in molarity, and you guys should know how to convert from, how to get molarity, right? Molarity equals moles over liters. So to figure out the concentration of H2S, we just need to take the moles of H2S, which is 0 0.0125 divided by the volume, and that will give us a molarity of 0 0.0250 m. 
Okay, now let's set up our ice table. Initial change, equilibrium. And let's see, we've got 2H2S in the gas phase, producing 2H2 and S2. And so let's see, we start with, I just had it, 0 0.0250 molar of our reactant H2S, and we have no product. Okay, next let's fill in our number of moles. So we have two moles in our change column. We have two moles of H2S and two moles of H2, only one of S2, so we'll leave that alone. And now comes our change. So remember, we're gonna be changing by some amount. So H2S is gonna change, right? It's gonna lose some amount. And H2 is going to gain that same amount times two. And S2 is gonna gain that same amount. All right, so now when we get to our equilibrium, remember it's I or initial plus change gives us our equilibrium concentration. So for H2S, we're going to have 0 0.0250 molar minus 2x. For H2, we're going to have 0 plus 2x, which is 2x. And for S2, we're going to have 0 plus x, giving us just x. Okay. Um, let me move this last column or this last row to the next page so we have a little bit more room to work. All right, now we have a little bit more room to work. Um, let's also fill in our equilibrium constant or write it down so we have it. So that is here 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh. And let's also write out our equilibrium expression because we're going to need to fill that in in a minute. So Kc equals the concentration of the product, so H2 squared because of our 2, and S2 over concentration of H2S. Again, because there's that 2 coefficient, it will also be squared. Okay, so let's plug and chug. Let's see how it goes. So we're going to have Kc, which is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 7th equals concentration of H2 squared, which is right there. So we're going to have 2x squared times concentration of S2 divided by concentration of H2S squared, which is this big long one here. 0 0.0250 molar minus x squared. Whew, looking a little messy. Okay, we could do a little bit of simplification here. We can, um, let's, let's square this one, giving us 2x squared times x, which we could write instead as and how about if I knew my math, we could try that again. If we square that, it's going to be 4x squared times x, sorry, which I'm going to rewrite as 4x cubed. Um, and then we could square this thing here on the bottom. Okay, well, first what you're going to notice, if I were to bring this over here, which I'm not going to take the time to write it right now, um, what you're going to notice, uh, first of all, is that we're not going to be able to take the square root of it because we've got a cubed and we've got a squared. Um, oh my goodness. So we're going to end up having to use a quadratic formula, quadratic equation. Um, which, here's the good news, you're not going to have to do. Okay. If you run into a situation like this where you get something like x cubed or 
x squared and x or x cubed and x squared and x, that kind of stuff. You, you're not, you, you still need to solve it, but we're going to do what we call an estimate. We're going to take a guess. Okay, we're going to make an assumption. So let me get rid of this stuff here for a minute. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do. We're going to assume, and I forgot to put a two there. I hope somebody shouted that out. Said big four, no. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to assume. We're going to assume that x is very small. Okay, this is really important. We're going to assume that that x is very small. In fact, we're going to assume that it's so small that when we subtract it from our original 0.20, 0.0250, that the answer is still going to be 0 0.0250, okay? Which would mean that we get to ignore the x, which is going to make our math a lot easier. So we are allowed to do this. If you run into a situation where you've got x squared and x cubed and x and all these different x's, what you're going to do is you're going to assume the x is small. And this, this will, you'll, we're going to decide if our assumption is valid um, our assumption is valid if x is less than or equal to 5% of our given value. Okay, so we're going to actually have to check it when we're done to make sure that we're right. Um, so really, really important. Get this blue stuff written down because I'm going to erase it because it's taking up all my space. Okay, um, I'm going to hit pause and erase. All right, so again, we're going to make this assumption because we've got a disaster going on here that our x is really, really small. So we're going to ignore that x. So now we're just going to cube or square our 0 0.0250 giving us 6.25 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, uh, I guess we should probably write things together so we can see where we're at. So now we have 1.67 times 10 to the negative 7th equals 4x cubed over... 6.25 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so now let's multiply both sides by 6.25 times 10 to the negative 4, giving us um, 1.04 times 10 to the negative tenth equals 4x cubed. Now we can divide both sides by 4, giving us 2.6 times 10 to the negative 11 equals x cubed. Now we can cube both sides, giving us our final answer. Cube root, both guys, sorry. Cube root, both sides, giving us our final answer. So, let me cube those, and I got 2.96 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, now, that's what we think our k, that's what we think our, our x equals. Now, to make sure that our assumption was valid, we now need to make sure, remember, that this is less than 5% of our original. So the way you do that is you take our, what we think is our x, divide it by our original number, which was this one right here, 0 
And that gives us, oh, times 100 to get the percent, right? Times 100. And that gives us, um, I got 1.18%, which is less than 5%, which means our assumption was valid. And that is something that you would want to put in your work that you actually show that your assumption is valid. Um, so now, let me erase some stuff. Uh, we know what our x is. I'll erase the rest of the stuff so that we can calculate um, the concentrations. Okay, so remembering that x equals 2.96 times 10 to the fourth. So concentration of H2S equals 0 0.0250 minus 2x. Concentration of H2 equals 2x and concentration of S2 equals x. So that means concentration of S2 is 2.96 times 10 to the negative fourth. Concentration of H2 is 5.92 times 10 to the negative fourth. And concentration of HS is um, 0 0.02 four four molar which is slightly less than 0 0.025 but not by much Whew. okay folks um the only time you have to use your assumptions remember is if you get in a situation where you have x squareds and x cubes and x's and you feel the need to use a quadratic equation Whew. i know that was long but that's it for today have a good one